All right, y'all. I'm back. I'm back. Um, about to check our potatoes in the oven. I usually just check the, the tenderness of my potatoes with the tip of a fork or a knife. So they've been in, they've been going in the oven uh, for at least about 20-25 minutes. Um, about as long as I as the the last video was or part part one of the vi this video was is how long they've been in there. And they are tender. Look y'all. Or you can stick your fork through it like that. That's how you know they are tender. All right, and I like to cook mine a little bit higher than 350. A lot of people cook it on 350. I cook it on 375. Well, these are perfectly tender, y'all, and crispy on the outside. But yeah, that's why I like it. I like to cook them on 375 and sometimes 400, depending on, uh, you know, the oven that I'm using because I like the crispy skin because I eat my skin. Um, so I like it for it to be crispy and then the potato inside to be tender. What? What? Your drum? You got sticks. Is your get your sticks off the floor right there and play with your drums. He's looking for his drumsticks. Okay. Anyway, y'all. So um, potatoes are done. Y'all see me dress those. Okay. So right here in the um, skillet, I just have uh, some garlic that I had already broken up and started to fry. This is olive oil that is um that is cooking in. I just got it on a low fire because I want to really develop that garlic flavor. No, no, no. I want you to use the black ones right now. Use the black drumsticks, okay? That's the only ones that, that I want you to use right now. Look. Anyway, y'all, uh, about to make me burn my broccoli. I mean, my uh, garlic. So anyway, so this has just been cooking on a low temp. And that's what it looks like. Nice fried broccoli is going to be a darker brown. But I'm trying to just develop that garlicky flavor in the oil before I ever put the the um, broccoli. Mm. Okay, just use those for now, okay? Mommy's trying to finish her video. Okay. Anyway, so um, I already have my broccoli steamed. I steam it first before I do this, um, and I put it right. So this is this is essentially garlic oil now because I've infused the flavor of garlic into this olive oil. So this is garlic infused olive oil right now. So when I put this broccoli in, it's going to assume all of that garlicky flavor that's in the oil that it's cooking in. This is just steamed broccoli. I don't have no seasoning on it, all right? So boom. Okay, so boom. And just put it right in there. And my broccoli is wet because I steam it with water, so it has water at the bottom of this container, which is why I did not dump it out immediately into there. Because it was going to give a big old fry sound and pop everywhere. And that's just not the vibe. That's not the uh, Chef Charlie's Kitchen vibe. So I don't do, I don't do all of that. So this is how I do it. I, have, I start off with steamed broccoli. It's a quick process. And you have the, the garlic oil at the bottom. And then you just start to toss it around, move it around in your pan. I like to leave my stems long because I like the stems. I don't believe in like cutting half the stem off and eating only this. Okay, because I paid for it. And then the rest of the stem, I saved it because this is this will make perfect some good broccoli soup. Um, you know, use everything, waste nothing. So as I mentioned, this broccoli is not seasoned, right? So let's go in with our seasoning. What's the first thing I'm gonna use, y'all? Sea salt. Just a little bit of sea salt. Use that one that you have, okay? Alright. Cooper keep interrupting, so I'm gonna have to hurry up because he's getting impatient. Alright, a little bit of sea salt. Alright. Fresh cracked black pepper. Alright. 
I like that fresh black um, pepper as opposed to the um, the one that's already grated for you in the can. You know, I grew up with that one, but I like that fresh type of flavor better. All right, and then y'all know I gotta hit it with the veggie magic. Chef Paul Perdon, veggie magic. I use that on almost every veggie. Uh, I ran out of lemon pepper yesterday, so I usually will also put lemon pepper on my broccoli. And give it a little toss. All right. All right. And it's okay. Turn that fire up, y'all. It's crispy garlic broccoli so you want you want it to turn brown you want it to be kind of, kind of crispy on the edges so it's okay to put that fire a little high all right ain't nothing wrong with it also in addition to fresh garlic i also use granulated garlic in addition to it it would not be fried it would not be fried garlic broccoli or crispy garlic broccoli if we didn't use garlic and got some little balls. One thing that's interesting to know about um, Louisiana is that the <laughs> the humidity here is, it, it ain't nothing nice, you know, and I noticed it immediately because um, a, lot, a lot of things like my seasonings, they cake. So fast, like I can buy the same season in Georgia, and it will not cake like this. Like I have not had this garlic that long, and the humidity, just the moisture in the air because of how New Orleans is set up with water all around it, um, and it's below sea level, so there's a lot of moisture in the air. And one of the things that I noticed immediately was how my seasonings would cake up here, as opposed to they wouldn't do it like that in Georgia, because. You know, these, these seasonings, they have um, anti-cake ingredients. A lot of seasonings do, so they won't, you know, make these little balls of garlic like this right here that I'm breaking up. <laughs> um, but it still does. So, you know, I've learned to deal with it and keep, you know, keep the quality of my spices you know, as fresh as possible. But... Like I said, that humidity ain't nothing much. But anyway, so yeah, that's fried garlic broccoli for you. Um, first things first, make sure you put that fresh clove of garlic down in your butter or in your oil, that whatever you're using to saute in. I use olive oil um, and let it cook in there. Let it let the garlic literally be the only thing in there with the oil, because you are infusing that garlicky flavor in that oil. And once you add the broccoli in, that oil, which is now garlic infused oil, you're cooking in garlic flavor. On top of that, you're going to sit up here and add some granulated garlic as well. All right? A little veggie magic, salt and pepper. That's all it takes. Now my edges are starting to get brown. Y'all see that? See how brown they are? They're starting to crisp up on the side. And that fire is on high, y'all. So, I'm, I'm seeing my little brown color that I like to see. And uh, there we have some crispy garlic broccoli. So, y'all want to see me plate this bad boy? I'm going to plate it and I'm going to show y'all how I like to do my potato and everything. Watch me. Watch me now. Work, work, all working out, baby. All working out, baby. Now that I'm ending. Oh, why did I turn the fire on? Um, yes. You know, don't be afraid of that heat, y'all. You want it to get nice and brown and crispy. So you have tender broccoli with crispy edges. All right. Okay, baby, you have to play with it, with it, what you have right now. Uh, Koopa <laughs> recently has been telling me that his, all his toys are broken. 
And I've been asking him in response to him telling me this. Oh, really? They're broken? How they get broken? Um, um, uh, you broke them? Yeah. Oh, so maybe that's why you toys are broken. Which they're not actually broken, but you know, he's kind of rough with them. But he is rough with them. And then he has a couple uh, electronic cars that need batteries. So he is convinced that his toys are broken. And when he comes to me, he's so sad. Like, Mom, my toys are broken. It's so, like, it's the end of the world. It's hilarious. Uh, but anyway, so. Let me grab. Let me grab a plate. Alright, and that's done. So I'm cutting it fire off. Mm. Ooh, y'all, this broccoli is lit. Ooh, it's lit. All right, I'm ready. I'm ready to eat now. Okay. So, um, I already put a slit in here in the potato. So I usually just push down on that slit and pop it all, pop it open like so, so that it'll open up nice and steamy, just like that, and give you some to put all your goodies in there so if I was if I were putting cheese in this the cheese would go down first but I'm not putting cheese in there just FYI so I, I usually just put a little bit of salt and a little bit of fresh cracked pepper all right um, I have salted butter which I like to use on potatoes Where's your juice at? Go get your cup of juice that you bought out there. Um, but since I already put salt in there, I'll just use regular butter. Um, this is challenge butter, one of my favorite butters to use. It's always pretty reasonably priced for a good quality butter. Um, so I want to get a knife to cut this place and then it kind of spread it out a little bit. That was a big chunk. So, thank you. I got it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then just put a little butter in there. And I, like I said, I classically dress my. I classically dress my potatoes, sour cream, butter, sometimes cheese. Uh, but if you have like a stuffed potato, you want to put seafood or whatever, that's all wonderful and great. But when I'm eating it as a part of a meal, I keep it very classic, butter, sour cream, and salt, pepper. Um, you know, and I just pop it on out. So my, my pork chops are over here chilling, they're resting. I finished cooking. Uh, I finished cooking my pork chops a while back. That was one of the first thing. Well, that was the first thing I made it before um, I made the broccoli. So the pork chops are ready. They're warm. They're waiting on me as I plate this potato. So I just put a nice little glob of, of, of sour cream on top, y'all. It ain't nothing too fancy, I promise. But it, um, but it does taste great. The purpose of me putting seasoning first is so that way the seasoning won't fall down onto the plate get lost in the sour cream like you know i want the seasoning on my potato so i can taste it okay put a little salt a little pepper all right shoot mess around put a little veggie magic if y'all play too much with me okay because i'm about that life i'm about that veggie magic life so you know don't play with it now y'all don't play don't play too much with it okay because i'm about that life like i said so that's the potato and get some broccoli on the side on the side also cooper really loves broccoli too which i'm so proud i'm a proud parent of a broccoli loving kid so you know that's i feel is an accomplishment not many parents can say that their three-year-olds eat broccoli um so yeah i'm pretty proud of that because he has not always eaten broccoli but when he started liking it i was like Okay, go ahead. Take it in the living room. I'm about to make your food so you can eat dinner. Okay. Um, so, yeah. 
garlic broccoli. Let's taste it. Let's see what it tastes like. Mm. Oh yeah. Mmm. It's just popping with garlic flavor. It's like garlic and broccoli. It's like a match made in heaven. Um, also broccoli and um lemon pepper. But I usually put lemon pepper in my garlic broccoli, but anyway. Yes, those two pairings are amazing when it comes to broccoli. Mmm. Y'all, that's so good. Mmm. Delicious. Okay. Boom. Okay, so boom. <laughs> and then we're gonna grab one of these nice looking pork chops right here. Like that. Bam. Sit it on the plate. And that's our simple little meal for tonight. I'm gonna bring it over a little closer so y'all can see. Okay. We got Classic baked potatoes, salt, pepper, etc. And I always just put like, you know, just so it won't look so plain white sour cream on top. I put a little bit of black pepper on top. And see, since this veggie magic is sitting right here, and I know y'all thought I wasn't going to do it, but it was sitting right there next to the pepper. I'm going to throw a little veggie magic on the party and just see what happened. I'm going to let y'all know what it tastes like. Okay. I mean, potatoes are vegetables. It claims to be vegetable magic, so let's see. Okay, let's just see. Anyway, and then that's that fried pork chop right there, y'all. Uh, the whole wheat flour, I seasoned the flour. I, I doused the pork chops themselves with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce and hot sauce on a plain pork chop. Then I put it in seasoned flour. Um, whole wheat flour with a lot of different seasonings in it. The pork chop is um, darker than... Mm, with a fried pork chop, I would probably normally look because it, it is fried in whole wheat flour. So you're basically uh, looking for a golden brown color on a brown flour, something that's already starting off pretty dark brown. So I'm not afraid that it's darker. Uh, I always, for whatever reason, enjoy darker foods better. Like I like my cheese a little more burnt. Like y'all see, I'm making crispy broccoli. Like I'm looking for the burnt edges on everything. So. Um, that's not necessarily bad. It, uh, to me, it equates flavor over lighter items. Anyway, so that's our little plate that we got going on. I want to take the camera up and make it a little closer. Um, sorry, y'all. There we go. Okay, but anyway, this is the plate. This is what it looks like. Um, that's the veggie magic on the potato right there. Um, nice crispy garlic broccoli and a nice fried pork chop. That's dinner tonight, y'all. I'm about to go watch this game and watch these Saints whoop up on these Dallas Cowboys. Last time I saw the score, it was three to six, I think. Dallas, uh, three to six Saints. So you know they starting off great. Uh, my boy Drew, Drew, Drew Breeze is not playing um, for the next few games, but they've been out there, you know, rocking and doing their thing. So I'm proud of my babies. I really am. Um, but anyway, this is Chef Charlie signing out. I'm about to go eat this delicious meal and uh, make Cooper's plate, sit down and eat, finish watching these things, beat them cowboys. And um, then I got to get up and go to work in the morning. And that's that's my cue. This is a press stop on the video. Love y'all. Chef Charlie out. Remember to like, subscribe, follow, share. And I love you guys very much. Deuces. Chef Charlie, check it out.